Hello viewers, welcome back to That'll Do Garage. We're gonna work on my wife's Jeep today. We got a growly wheel bearing. It's kind of a rawr, rawr, rawr. Changes pitch with the speed of the vehicle. And I'm confident it's the driver's side, but I don't know yet if it's the front or the rear. So the first thing we have to do is try to find a, another symptom for that. So I'm going to probably jack it up, try to wiggle the wheels, see if there's any play and see if there is any, you know, harshness when I'm spinning them by hand. Got to get that identified. So that did not go awesomely. Got it all jacked up, all four corners. And again, I'm pretty sure that it's this driver's rear that's making the noise. And that's based off of when I turn the wheel to the right. The noise gets louder as it shifts the load to, to the left side. And then it's also based off of when I sit in the back seat. It seems significantly louder than when I sit in the front seat. So I don't think it's this one. But in the interest of avoiding wasted work, I did jack up all four corners. None of them seem loose. None of them, uh, I put a pry bar underneath it and kind of wiggle it to see if there's any play. There's nothing there. Wiggled it top and bottom, left and right, with both hands, no movement. <laughs> Spinning them all around, I put the transfer case in neutral and I spin each wheel. Can't hear anything, they all sound the same. So, I really don't know what to do. There's really no visible, you know, no noticeable symptoms. So I think I'm going to just bite the bullet, take the risk, trust my instinct and do this driver's rear. Um, hopefully it goes okay. And by the way, if you may have noticed, I'm not my usual chipper charming self. I'm fighting off a cold today. So poor me, right? <laughs> anyway, let's get this wheel off and uh, get started. I hope you don't mind, I turned on the air conditioner because it was literally 85% humidity in here, which is like Florida level, and I'm a whiny baby. Um, so basically what I need to do is get at the, the wheel bearing, which is in this hub assembly, you know, right here. This is a CV shaft, a constant velocity shaft, and right under this ABS sensor is the hub assembly where the bearing is, and I suspect that's what's making the noise. So I'm going to take this off, this nut that um, attaches the CV shaft to the hub. And I'm going to take the brakes off and then see what happens after that. I have no idea. That was pretty easy. Got the uh, giant nut off. The CV shaft is loose. I took the rotor and, I mean the caliper and the bracket off. I took the rotor off and then the parking brake shoes. The liner just came right off, so that's fun. But right now I'm trying to figure out how to get this hub off of whatever is holding it. I think it needs to come apart right here, but I'm not quite sure. This is where it gets really vague on all the YouTube videos. I don't know what the heck I'm supposed to do now. So I'm gonna try to get this whole flange to come off. Okay, things got a lot, a lot of control, but uh, I think that's okay. Basically, instead of sitting down here and screwing with it and questioning everything, I decided to just take the whole knuckle off and set it on the workbench. So I just zipped all these bolts out. Everything came out pretty good. Um, the ABS sensor, I disconnected way up there by the fuel tank because these ABS sensors are kind of fragile and if you take it off here you can, I don't know, disrupt it I guess or just kind of make it so it's not so sensitive or maybe it's, maybe it's not precisely where it was before and now it's got a layer of rust between it and the tolerance is different and then this sensor in the reluctor wheel you know it'll never work the same again so i always try to just leave these where they are and disconnect like this um up this in this case up it was by the fuel tank but 
So now I'll be able to get the CV shaft out and uh, I do still need to re release the emergency brake cable and I might end up just taking this lower ball joint nut off and then the whole thing should come off and set on the bench ideally. We'll see. All right, that's cooking right along. I got the CV shaft out. I tried to get the e-brake off and um, that just wasn't happening. The cable would not come out of the back of the the hub assembly there so I had to get the grinder out and zip that off which is okay because I don't think I was going to fix those e-brake shoes anyway but I wanted to show you I'm working on this lower ball joint right now and I have a problem because as I spin my impact the ball joint just spins so I'm not making progress so what I'm going to do is put a jack underneath here and jack this up to pinch it tight and then I will be able to zip the nut off. All right, so that worked. Got that bugger out laying on the bench. Everything I said about the ABS sensor, disregard all of that because there's a tab right there which is the ABS sensor. Keys off of this guy. And uh, I'm going to have to pull that out because I think this bearing comes out this way? No, maybe it goes the other way. Maybe it goes down? It's possible it goes down. Um, I'm not sure but we'll see it took me about an hour and a half to get it this far I got some tool kit from uh, O'Reilly that's supposed to make it so I don't need a shop press but we'll see wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to have to go buy a little tabletop press from Harbor Freight but give it a go here I'm gonna keep disassembling I'm gonna try to get this backing plate off and decide which way this bearing needs to go. Um, this is the one I got from uh, Amazon. It was like 60 bucks or something. Now that doesn't want to drop in there, which makes me think then it goes the other way. It comes in from the outside. So I will need to press this out that way and then press it back in from the front. But let's flip it over and see what we can see. All right, things are progressing now. I did get the hub here uh, pressed out of that part by using my fancy shop press. Uh, now I'm gonna take this snap ring out that's right here and then I'm gonna flip it over again and press this bearing out. I think this is what the problem was all along that bearing is worn and the bummer thing is the race is still on here so I'm gonna have to either cut that or try to press that off too but I sure am glad I got this press because this would be that thing from O'Reilly's didn't work at all I couldn't get it to work I spent a bunch of time different adapters and everything and I never got it to apply the force in a you know a controlled way so I'm really glad this is working out but making progress there she is got the old bearing pressed out it was riding right in here so now I gotta drive the new bearing in I gotta press the new bearing in up until this ridge then put this snap ring back in and then I can press the drive flange back in I still have to figure out how to get this part off. I've seen some guys on the interwebs just cut this with a grinder, which I could do. Makes me a little nervous, but it's possible. Otherwise, I might be able to do some fancy press action here. We'll see. New bearing is pressed in. They used the old bearing as a perfectly sized driver adapter. And that works out great. I gotta put the snap ring in and then onto that race. 
That seemed to work. Here's a grinder. I thinned it out a whole bunch. And then I put a chisel underneath it and it cracked it, which was enough to let it slide up. It just slightly scuffed the surface here, but that should be fine. It's not like a seal. Moving right along. Okay, a new bearing is installed. That took a long time. All these different adapters and spacers and changing the height, I had to make these blocks and find my ball joint press so I could use the different adapters. It really kicked my butt. It took a couple hours, but it's done now. Ready to go back on the vehicle. Well, like the expression says, even a broken clock is right twice a day, right? Unless it's military time, then it's once a day. Uh, it was that left rear. I just got back from the test drive. She's all quiet now. No more whining, grinding noise. So that's good. Got it all wrapped up. Nobody died. I still have all my fingers. Now the next problem is obviously the other three wheel bearings all have the same amount of mileage that those wheel bearings had. So. I'm sure it's gonna need more soon, but that'll get us through for now. So that's gonna do it for today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.